typical Walmart parking lot. Wasilla, Alaska. The ice is only about four inches thick under your feet. But this is the most beautiful Walmart I've ever been at. Very beautiful here. That's not even a super Walmart. Did you know that? Here we are standing in a private airfield that spans the back of my uncle's house. That is Mount Susitna when the original homesteaders came to Alaska and homestead land was made available. They settled in the Matanuska and Palmer Valleys. It's very fertile land due to volcanic ash and this is where they grow the 1,000-pound squash, the 25-pound zucchinis, 700-pound pumpkins and such in our really short growing season. And all of those were massive glacier-filled mountains, and it made the soil down here very, very fertile. Now, this private airstrip is pretty common for Alaska. A lot of our products, a lot of our village and stuff are actually moved by private airplanes. Um, it's not uncommon for people to have small planes and licenses here. About 3.30 and the sun's starting to go down here. We are gaining daylight. We jump for joy for about a minute at a time. It's negative 12 degrees. Um, these are just some of the common trees that we have. Birch, spruce, blue spruce, and the light is fading. state tree is a Sitka spruce. I believe it's a blue spruce, but up here we have blue and white. Um, this is really old. Uh, I'm not sure by years, of course. Uh, there's a lot of medicinal purposes. The natives would take the sap and use it as an antiseptic in their mouth. It also has antibiotic properties. If you get cut or anything, it can actually help save you on that. Um, they also used to chew it as a form of like gum to keep the breath fresh. My one of my dads was a uh, Alaska native. He was Yupik Eskimo, and out of the Nome region. So when I was a little girl, he actually showed us that you could chew it like gum. It tastes exactly how you would think, like a spruce tree. If you're ever in a survival situation and you just need something to help stave off, you know, some infection and such, you can actually take the needles and steep a, a spruce needle tree and it helps too. So a 
lot of medicinal properties in this particular tree. Um, it also works as excellent fire starter. If you're ever in a situation and you can't get a fire kicked off, you can take and scrape some of the, the sap off and mix it with dry tinder and make um, a really flammable substance. So. This is an alder tree. Um, it's actually the moose's favorite. One of their favorite thing to eat. They walk along and you see the tips here. You can tell moose has been in the area and been grazing. They come along with their mouth and they pull at all the fresh buds and tips off. And so you end up with raw tips and they get really pointy. And that's one of their, their meals. It's their uh, alder salad, if you will. Uh, it's one of the signs that you look for when you're out hunting or photography, whichever you happen to be in. Um, and that it's one of their all-time favorites. So this is the buds that they, you know, the leaves come out of. And they make it through the winter and then out of that sprouts the beginning of the new life of the tree for the summer. This is Devil's Club. It is spiky, nasty. Um, you don't want to get it in you. They, it's called Devil's Club because it creates a burn. I don't know whether or not it's because of an allergic reaction or not. I don't know anyone that can walk through it. If you're really careful, um, you can actually take and take the spikes off, the needles as you will, um, and it can actually make a medicinal salve is one of the things that it can. Um, another antiseptic, antibiotic, and I don't know many people that use it though because they are deathly. In the summer it has huge palm-like fronds on it and even the leaves have spikes like these. Doesn't bother the bears so it's bear country when you see a bunch of them. This is an old birch tree that's been cut down. Uh, the birch itself, they used parchment, they made baskets out of many different things. Uh, it's a really old tree so it's really thick. And on it right here is some sh shelf lichen. I'm not familiar with the terms but it's really frozen out here so it's hard to uh, pull off just the birch parchment area. So. But these are considered shelf lichens. Like I said, not too positive as to the genus and such. Not overly good with scientific terms, so. Next to this on the same stump is that's birch lichen and then this is horse foot tinder I believe fungus I believe it's called uh, it's been used for a lot of different purposes um, it's not chaga but similar to it makes excellent tinder and the natives used to take a coal from their fire pit and use that to carry the coal to the next place after wrapping it in skins and such. I believe uh, this is all stuff that I was told by family members so um, and probably in some Alaskan history classes but not exactly 
the most remembered thing in my life. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, just all sorts of fungus on this one. It's really cold, so bear with me on uh, any shaking and such. These are high bush cranberries. Uh, of course, never guess what a berry is, but I'm really familiar with the berries up here. I both can and jar and make preserves and jellies and syrups and stuff, but they are a bit sour. Uh, gelatin is added. One of the plants that are up here that you won't see today is dogwood, and dogwood actually is high in natural pectin, so it's something that was used to preserve back in the day before you could go and buy pectin at the store. And there's rules in general. Um, not, of course, never do anything with a berry that you don't know, but up here, one that it was told to me as I grew up was always black, sometimes red, and never white. And it was just a way to make you know what you can and you can't eat. I was raised um, subsistence lifestyle, and we went into the woods and uh, hunted and fished and everything. So here's the moss. Even in the winter, it's still green. It doesn't ever change its color. It just becomes a lot more moist in the um, in the, the spring and the summer. So I'm always impressed with it. Here's a paper birch tree. Um, once again, I don't know the scientific name. I was told all my life it's called a paper birch, but as you can see, it has that fine layer, and it was used for a lot of purposes. Um, not really writing written history or anything, because the Alaskan Native people didn't have written history. Uh, stories were given by word of mouth, but um, you know, bas they weaved baskets with it. Uh, I want to say I've seen birch drums but all sorts of stuff and it's um it's pretty amazing you can also make birch syrup out of it not that i know anything about that but i've been told that you can and i know a friend that does it uh in her yard and it's really good but i know nothing about it so maybe i'll research it someday Here's another tree common to Alaska. It's a uh, cottonwood. And this spring it um it puts off when it goes to seed it puts off fluffs of cotton that go through the woods in the air and really hurts allergy people, but it looks like fluffs of cotton going through the woods. So and here's yet another type of lichen. And I just turned around and saw this guy and all of the nodules, if you will, on that description coming off of it at every branch and such. Uh, I haven't ever actually seen a tree quite like this before. It's missing its bark, so I almost wonder if it was a bark beetle kill and the tree tried to make it, or I don't know if anyone out there knows exactly what that is. It's obviously trauma to a tree. I don't see any other trees around it where there was fire or anything, and we don't have a super high lightning activity where I think it would be hit in the middle of all those trees. So, But every single branch and such. 
but you see all the little fine holes that's a sign of bark beetle so it may have been a tree that got missed when we had our infestation a few years back but it's definitely a, a unique and oddly beautiful in the destruction and um, this tree you can see how it's actually missing its bark it was one of the signs they burrowed themselves into the tree and in essence there's you know hundreds thousands of them and they end up killing the tree from the inside out and one of the signs that you know that you're having the issue is in the if, if we didn't have snow on the ground I could show you a pile of bark on the ground so in those fine little holes is a sign of them so uh, if you know anything more about it uh, let me know from what I understand we have it under control but we did have a really large infestation up here where they had to go around and use pesticides of some sort and uh, chop down any trees with it and that had been infected by it uh, the kills to the trees up here is one of the reasons we had some pretty major fires uh, because we couldn't get all the trees the infestation was so bad this is fireweed we've all seen pictures anytime you see an advertisement or things on TV you see the beautiful fireweed and I thought you guys would all appreciate a shot of it after the flowers have gone and everything uh, covered in hoarfrost and um, this is what it looks like in its dormant state it's another plant up here that when it goes to seed it actually puts a bunch of cotton like things in the air and yet again allergy suffers it's one of the things that they suffer from up here so but it has a pinkish purplish kind of fuchsia if you will flower that buds off of it you can make honey and jams and jellies and such out of it um, it has a, a really it's not even a floral flavor that it makes but I suggest I it, advise you to try it sometime in your life fireweed honey is my favorite and this these feather see these fine feather looking things they almost look like frozen pine that is hoarfrost so it's the moisture in the air and the moisture coming off of the tree and it is formed in this filament the sun's the sun's going to be down in less than probably a half an hour now and so it's getting colder um, it's about negative 15 now so that is negative 15 um, negative 15 and it's cold uh, if you could hear me walking you'd actually hear the crunch of the snow because it's so frozen so it's not a powdery anymore and there's no moisture in that and every step you take is loud but beautiful ice ice formations in its finest I don't know the name of this and I don't know if it's a lichen or lichen I've heard it pronounced different ways or if it's a fungus but here's another one some more of the horse foot tinder um, one of the one of the things they do up here is souvenir shops and artists take them down and um, paint on them and make displays and pictures and stuff of the Aurora and all that uh, and yeah I use it my mom it's something we did when we were kids uh, it was an art project we would take them that one there um, was actually on a dead tree I just peeled it off so uh, but that was one of our projects during the winters and maybe even in the summer but just to entertain us uh, the the non wood looking part is actually when it's 
alive and fresh it's actually soft and then that part right there actually hardens and makes it a paintable surface so and here's a better shot of a cotton wood um, you can see its bark uh, forms like river channels if you will um, I'm not an arborist, so once again, bear with me, but you can see this one's really old. Uh, see how deep it is? Um, I know it, it's throughout a lot of Alaska. I know the southeast, which I've never been down to the southeast, but um, I know they grow monstrous down there. I couldn't put my arms around this one. Um, probably hundreds of years old uh, as they grow they tend not to have branches down low and stuff and I think aside from a few redwoods that we have way down in the far far southeast um, it's the largest tree in Alaska so and this is a great find in the backyard look at this Symbotico so there is a cottonwood and a, a birch um, growing together. And look how big that cottonwood is. So joined together as one. Mother Nature is an amazing thing. Growing as Siamese twins, if you will. Um, look at that. Pretty amazing. Definitely beautiful.